if you're out there in Toronto and you've been attracted to investing in American real estate because the price points are so much lower than what they are in Toronto, I want you to watch this show because this show is going to be a cautionary tale of what can happen to you if you make mistakes. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. Today, we are working with my man, Hassan. Hassan is an investor from Toronto. And Hassan, you're like a lot of people from Toronto and all over Canada, really. You're interested in investing in American real estate because it's cheap. So cheap. Pennies on the dollar compared to what you're paying in Toronto and many markets in Canada, okay? But, folks, you can't look at it and think since the stakes are so much smaller, you're invincible. You can't lose money. That's not the case. Today, Hassan, I got a quad for you that you could pick up for only $30,000 out of your pocket, okay? Only thirty grand out of your pocket, and the thing, when running well, is going to produce $36,000 a year in rent for a $30,000 investment. Why? Why can you get it so cheap? Because the owner was an out-of-state owner who screwed the whole thing up, did everything you can do wrong, wrong, and he's desperate, and you're going to be able to swoop in and take advantage of that. And on top of that, I'm going to show you what not to do to end up in his spot because you don't want to be in his spot. You want to be in your spot. More after that, after this quick break. Welcome back, people. Now, this quad itself, the building is sweet. This is a sweet building. I like this building quite a bit. I have an intense knowledge of this building, more than anybody else out there probably. But this is a cautionary tale, okay? You do not want to be in the situation that this guy is in. This guy made all the mistakes you could make, folks. They say you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. I don't know anything that illustrates that more than this particular listing. Here's the deal. 2014 West 93rd Cleveland, 4 for 102. Priced at 169 grand. 169 grand for a quad. Okay, market rents, pull this chart up, baby. $3,000 a month. 36,000 a year. Priced at 169 grand. Why is it still on the market? This should be a $200,000 property, right? Let's take a look at the pictures. What do we got? One, two, three, four shots of the exterior. Hell, these aren't they didn't even go out to this one. This is just a Google shot, right? We got and actually I think this is my photo. I'm pretty sure they used my photo, right? We only got exterior shots. And this hasn't sold, even though it's priced cheaper than it should be. Because there's some serious problems going on with this building. And I know all about them. Because the uh, guy who owns it is a dipshit. He's just a total dipshit, folks. This guy has screwed himself so many times by being a dumbass. Okay? Now, the property itself is a great property. has a great potential. But if you are a dumbass, you will run it into the ground. Doesn't matter how cheap the property is, folks. Doesn't matter. If you do stupid stuff, you're going to lose money, okay? So, when we sold this guy this asset, things were going good. We had tenants. And then, this guy made the mistake of just checking out. If he ran into an issue, we would email him about the issue, explain to him the cost of the issue, and he would not send in the money, nor would he reply. Well, guess what, folks? 
there's an issue at your property and you don't pay your bills, your property manager isn't going to fix the issue for free. I don't know what world you guys live in uh, where you think that's going to happen. If your property manager sends you an email like, hey, you have X problem, we need X amount of money to solve the problem, and you don't reply to that email and send in that money, well, guess what? That problem ain't getting fixed. And then it's just going to go worse and worse and worse. So where this guy is at right now, or where he was at by the end of things, stopped paying his bills, we had to stop managing his asset. He ended up with squatters living in the basement. And as a matter of fact, we actually published some content on that. Why don't you guys check some of that out? I guess there's, hold on one second. I guess there's two, like, I feel like, that lady's living down here for a little while. I helped my mom out upstairs. And uh, I've been cleaning the basement, but it's like, it looks like a mess, but it was all closed on top of this before. So it was even worse. A lot of it is stuff that she had stored down here. Okay. They just, like, ripped it apart, you know, so I'm trying to pick it up, clean it, and... So when you get a squatter, your property manager can, should, and will remove that squatter. But guess what your property manager won't do, folks? They will not remove squatters for free, right? So what we have here is a situation where this investment, the investor chose not to uh, to do repairs on some units that went vacant. Then you start getting more vacancies, then you get squatters in the building. If you're not going to pay money to get new tenants in there, the more vacancies you're going to have, the easier it is for squatters to go in there. So in that content, you saw uh, things are starting to spiral out of control. We were collecting rent, I believe, from like one tenant, maybe two tenants, and just utilizing that money to uh, put Band-Aids on his property and slowly try to get those people out. But eventually more problems happen, and if you're not paying the money for us to go and solve those problems, it just goes out of control. He ran out of money. Uh, so eventually we had to just stop. We had to just uh, let the neighborhood take it over, right? And then when the guy finally reached out to us, he's like, hey, why isn't my property selling? I want to sell my property. And I had to explain to him, like, yeah, when you originally listed your property, uh, you had a decent situation, but then uh, you ran into some issues and you stopped paying your bills uh, and we had limited amount of your money to solve the problem. So, of course, they're going to get worse and worse and worse. Now, uh, your property is definitely not going to sell for what you thought it was, what it should be worth because you fucked it all up, bro. <laughs> so you need to give us the money to solve the problem for you. Uh, or there's really nothing we can do for you, man. No one's buying your problem property, bro. I don't, I don't know why you disappeared for so long. So uh, at that point, the guy didn't want to pay any money to take care of his property. We, of course, completely stopped managing it because we're not going to work for you for free. And what he has since done is uh, held on to it for a few months. I don't know what the heck he did, but then it recently just popped back on the market 46 days later uh, with nothing being done to it so it's a whole mess right now right this is what the uh this is what the listing agent had to say amazing opportunity to own this all brick four unit building including huge lot next door each unit offers two bedrooms with the living and dining rooms four balconies beautiful original hardwood floors throughout new roof installed four years ago potential rent around 800 per unit i, I don't agree with that i think it's about 750 uh this is the perfect investment opportunity Price to sell fast due to owner not capable of managing. Call for more details, <laughs> right? So he hasn't actually done anything. He's just ignoring the problem. He hasn't hired a new property manager to solve that problem. He's just refusing to solve that problem. So what you have, folks, last time I saw, we had squatters coming in there, right? You saw the footage of the squatter in the basement. I assume the it was like one or two tenants, I believe. I assume they probably moved out because the guy's not fixing problems. So you probably at this point, I'm guessing, have a building that is completely occupied by squatters, right? And this guy's just refusing to do anything. He's like, ah, here's my problem, take it, right? That's why you get pictures of only the outside, right? These realtors, they're not property managers. They're not going to go in and deal with it. So what does that mean for you? What does that mean for investors? Does that mean this is an unbuyable investment? No, it's actually a big opportunity to make a lot of money. This guy made all the mistakes in the world, right? You can't. Just let your problems compound, right? You get a little rock in the corner of your windshield, you get that little crack, and then it starts spider webbing out of control. You got to take care of it 
at the beginning. You get a little leak, you got to plug the leak or it's just going to explode, right? That's what this guy did. He tried walking away from the problems, ignoring the problems, expecting the problems to fix themselves, expecting things to be fine when he's not actually paying bills to his on-the-ground team, right? You don't want to be that guy because that guy's about to lose a lot of money because nobody is going to pay 169000 for a four-unit building full of friggin' squatters, right? We got at least $60,000 of work needed to take this thing and turn it around, right? So because of that, the most I want to see you pay is 120 grand. 120 grand and then about 60k worth of work. It's $180,000 all in. Now you have to understand something. You got a dis distressed seller who's refused to do anything, totally out of control, has no ability to manage his investment. He should not be in the real estate business. It looks like he's learned that. This guy's got no clue what's going on, okay? So you're going to try to aggressively get him to sell it for pennies on a dollar at 120 k But what you have to understand, folks, is you're not going to be able to do your normal due diligence, right? Home inspection, appraisal, how are you going to do that? The guy doesn't have access to the units. It's just there. What you see is what you get, right? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you a little bit of footage that we had prior to the squatters moving in. So this is like a little bit of info we have for you, what this building looked like a year or two ago. Does it still look like this? Probably not. 2014 West 93rd Cleveland 44102, and I priced this sucker at $214,900. Now, while you guys are enjoying the lovely footage my film team has put together for you, I'm going to talk to you guys about why I freaking love quads, okay? I love quads more than any type of investment there could ever be because it's the best of both worlds, right? Let me explain. Real estate, it's about uh, two things, really, right? When you're doing rental real estate, there's two things that are more important than everything financing and collecting rent, right? The, that's what we do, right? We finance assets, we collect rent. And the quad is the investment that combines the best of both of those worlds because when you finance real estate, the best type of financing is residential real estate and you get this residential real estate on properties that are between one and four units. It's 30 years, low interest, fixed interest, tax deductible, the best type of financing you can get. One to four unit properties only though, right? You can't get it on a six unit apartment building. Can't get it on a five unit apartment building. Only on one to four units. So obviously four units bringing in rent is more than three units bringing in rent. So we get the very most amount of rent with the very best type of financing, right? So it is the best of both worlds. In the Cleveland market, we do not have a large supply of four unit apartment buildings okay we got a lot of singles we got a lot of duplexes and we got a decent chunk of six unit apartment buildings not that many four unit apartment buildings so when a four unit apartment building such as this beautiful monster that it is comes available guys you gotta you gotta move quick there's gonna be a lot of people bidding on this and what we have here right as you've been looking at the footage, okay, you can tell there's some vacancies here. We have one tenant in there. They're just hanging out, all right? Long, long time tenant, I believe they've been there a little bit. They're just hanging out at 596, okay? And that's below market rent because these are all two bedroom units, right? So market rent for each of these is 750, right? So this sucker's going to have a rent roll of $3,000 once we get everybody in there, everything, uh, you know, in tip-top shape. And to get it into tip-top shape, we got to renovate those three vacant units, okay? That's what it used to look like. I'm going to guess to get it to look like that again, you're going to need to spend at least sixty grand, right? What that's going to be is Holton Wise coming in, evicting squatters everywhere, and then getting everything rent ready. Because here's the thing with squatters, folks. I don't know if you're aware of this. But, like, they're not the cleanest people. <laughs> they don't just move in and take nice care of it, right? No, they're just shooting up everywhere. It's a whole friggin' mess, right? So, you're going to have to buy it totally sight unseen, cash, no inspections, no appraisals, no nothing. So, I think 120 makes sense, and I think 60 is a good budget for that, right? What you'll get after that. This is like I said, show you this earlier, show it to you again. 3000 a month in rent, 36 k what that'll look like. Uh, after fixed and variable expense estimates, just under 1200 bucks a month in cash flow, a little bit over 14 for the year, right? All in for 180. 
At that point, we could then refinance your money out, turn it into a burr. You're going to get it to appraise for about 200 which is what the property should be worth if you have anybody other than this complete idiot owning it, right? So that means the bank will kick you back 150 You're all in for 180 after all the repairs and evictions and nonsense. So you're really only going to be into this long term for 30 k which would pencil out to a 22.3% cash on cash return, right? So for the right investor, uh, this guy's problem could be your payday, right? So get aggressive. You see an investor with a pain point, guy who got into a business he didn't understand, uh, thought he could just disappear, thought his problems would go away if he didn't pay the people that work for him the money to do them, which is totally insane to me. But, hey, not everybody is cut out for entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurship. Not everybody's cut out to be a business owner. Not everybody is that smart, right? Not everybody is a responsible property owner. Uh, this is definitely a cautionary tale of what not to do as an out-of-state owner because I assure you, I ain't the only company out there that's not going to work for you for free, folks. You got to pay your bills. You go to the steakhouse, they cook you a steak, you're going to have to pay for that steak. You want your uh, cable to be on? You want to watch the game? Well, you better pay the cable company, right? So number one, pay your bills. Number two, pay attention to your investment. Number three, do what your boots on the ground are telling you to do, or you're going to lose big like this dude. So if picking up his problem sight unseen without any further due diligence makes sense to you, let's go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.